Mm. Okay, so, you know, my, okay, this, one of the things is at the lower down, you know, each level of consciousness, I mean, what do I mean by level of consciousness? I mean, how, one, how far one is down in, in separation, how far one is identified with thoughts. And when this heavier, you know, for me it's like, uh, if, uh, I mean, they, they say with The Course of Miracles, it's um, removing the blocks to love. But I could equally say it's removing the blocks to light. And on a certain level, um, I, you know, I'm going to use a funny way of my interpretation, like identification or heavy identification with something creates darkness. And if you're very heavily identified with the ego, then there is not enough light that comes in to that consciousness, that separated consciousness. And so it then starts to orchestrate at the, at what I call the darker levels of consciousness. You know, I went down pretty, pretty dark. I was, an, I was an addict uh, in the stock market, uh, suicidal at the end, uh, and was dishonest as well in my dealings. Um, so as you go darker and darker, as, as the identification with thoughts and the identification with body uh, gets uh, higher, it's like the darkness increases, the vibration goes down, uh, the level of self-centeredness increases. and uh, and. I would say, like, you know, the lower levels are all quite similar. They're like wave bands. You know, the darkest levels, they're all having the same dark, darkish type thoughts, you know. Usually at the bottom levels, how can I kill myself or how can I kill everyone else? Either I'm going to hang myself or I'm going to get a gun and I'm going to shoot everyone dead, you know. So those are like usual patterns. Um, and if you go really down dark, yeah, you, you go to those sort of luciferic, uh, demonic type uh, actions as well. And they're, they're collective. Um, it's like, um, like uh, I, I got this, you know, like if, if people have got quite a lot of um, uh, quite inflated egos and they take alcohol or, or drugs or something, I'm not saying everyone, but people who are pretty low into addiction, into dishonesty, into selfishness, take you see even it's like they, they have no there's no light coming in and so either uh, they can get take, taken over by one is they can be taken over by demonic entities or the other thing is they start tuning in it's like they're on a radio station now where they pick up from the collective radio um, thoughts which are in tune with that low vibration so at a certain very low level they start to get um, really dark thoughts, like, um, and I definitely, in my addictions, you know, I started off with, my primary addiction was food addiction, my nature went on to other addictions, like once you get into that wave band, you start learning about other addictions as well, so it's like, because you're now, I'm now on the radio addiction frequency, and it's like, oh, there's just, only the way to be an addict is to eat food and donuts, no, there's other ways as well, you know, so... And you get these like, it's almost like you get whispered in your ear, like, do this and do that. So, and it's like they pull you in to these uh, radio stations where you get these thoughts, or you may even get, if you go down low enough and take some alcohol, you may even be taken over by an entity which says, uh, I'm God and I order you to get a gun and shoot everyone dead. You know, and, and, then, and then they'll go to court and they'll say, well, I didn't do it. This voice told me it was God and told me to shoot everyone. And in a way, they're sort of telling the truth. That they get taken over by this thing and uh, do it. So, so that happens. There is, of course, they are, um, they are the, the vibrations of anti-life. Uh, so either one is going to be anti-life towards oneself or anti-life towards others, or maybe a mix of the two. Maybe I'm going to shoot everyone dead and then shoot myself afterwards or something like that. So... It's quite anti anti life in that way. Um, being attracted to these people, the way I see the attraction, I, I see like all of life as being synchronistically perfect in every moment. Every person what I meet, every event that occurs cannot be by accident, but is in fact perfect for me to transcend my karma. And I see that myself as having past lives as well. You know, I think Hawkins said on average, I think, you know, a lot of spiritual seekers are about 15 lifetimes. 
uh, people who are quite advanced may have had up to 15 lifetimes of uh, coming back over and over again. So it's like, and also in past lifetimes, it was, the times were much more bar barbaric. I mean, this, this era, if I'm incarnated now in this, in this time, it's actually quite a civilized time. You want to go back like 10 lifetimes. I mean, it was like, you know, the, 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 the dark ages. You know, if you've got, if you've got some donuts, I mean, I'd club you on the head and just take the donuts and you'd leave you for dead, leave you for dead by the street. And there's no police, there's no nothing. So it's like a bit like ape land or something. No, don't <laughs> so, you know, I'd probably like shoot the baker and just take, tell myself to the donuts. So, <laughs> there was no police, there was no morality in those times. You just take what you want and you get away with it. So, now that I'm in this lifetime, I've probably been quite a dark thug. And it's probably absolutely, and we've had a lot of wars in the past. Oh, if I was, if I was incarnated as a man, you know, we were going around slaughtering each other, you know. Uh, so that's all of that stuff is in me. So um, I may, I may, you know, if you're into advanced spiritual seeking, you may have been in spiritual groups like, and you may have been in spiritual groups which were cults in the past, in past lifetimes, or even satanic. I might have been, hopefully, not a satanic group. I don't think so. Uh, not that bad, but. Um, so, so in this lifetime, all you know, like you can be, you know, you can be acting like a saint and being nice and sort of giving sandwiches to the homeless people every day, and, and blessing everyone. But then these really, you know, all kinds of people are uh, come your way, and you have some kind of attraction to them. I, I, I really think that a lot of the things that I have strong attraction to, there is past life. It's like these past life associations. Like I was mentioning in another previous video about two girls having the same thing afflict them, you know. And these are like, you know, so if I've had like 15 lifetimes, and you can actually check this out with muscle testing, and you'll find that, yes, uh, do you have five, 10? Oh, you had 15 lifetimes, okay. So a lot of these characters come back, you know, and you meet them again in this lifetime. So I might be, so in this lifetime, and, and Hawkins did talk about it, sometimes you'll meet angels on your way in the darkness. You know, you'll be in need and suddenly an angel will appear out of nowhere and you need something and they'll, they'll help you out. And sometimes you get real, like, horrible people that you... And, and if you sort of... If you had a muscle test, you could... Uh, if, you, if you have access to a good kinesiologist, you can say, um, this individual, have I met this individual in a past lifetime? Yes or no? I think you probably get quite often with people with heavy baggage, you know, there is like, you have had at least one past lifetime with them. And uh, if they're very positive, you are a very positive influence in their life in the past lifetime. And if they're very negative, it's one of your lifetimes where you weren't so nice to people and it's coming back to, to revisit you. So you can either do it through past life, through, uh, through, um, through muscle testing or, or I trained as a hypnotherapist, but I, never, I did stop smoking, so I wasn't really a past life uh, regression uh, hypnotherapist. But you can visit past life uh, regression hypnotherapists, and then you'd go to them and say, uh, this individual, he seems to be giving me a lot of grief. Um, can you, I think I've got a past lifetime. Can you take me back to my lifetime with him, the, the most significant event? You go, the, the hypnotherapist will take you down an elevator, and say, when you get to floor one in, in deep trance, the elevator door will open and you'll go into that lifetime where your fear of this person originated and suddenly replay that memory of what happened with that individual. And so you can find out quite literally uh, what's going on and it will, it will um, and you'll see the event. So I don't think, I think most, but you know, for me the thing that um, anything can happen by accident. I think everything is uh, for my transcendence. So everything, you know, sometimes things happen in life and good karma comes my way. Someone gives me free money or free stuff and that really, really helps me. And then some people seem to be quite mean that I meet. Um, and uh, I sometimes meet individuals and I can feel like a heaviness between me and them. It's like, I don't, even though I've met them for the first time, I can feel like there's really heavy baggage there. And it's the first time I'm meeting them, and I'm, I'm pretty confident I've had probably, a few, you know, at least one heavy lifetime. And uh, Hawkins did talk about this, actually. 
And he was, he not only was he, had, he was a great, uh, he had access to muscle testing, he was also an enlightened teacher, so he'd have flashback to his lifetimes quite easily. And he talked about, um, yes, so, uh, what was it? Yes, there was a guy who, um, they'd get reincarnated over and over again, and they were in the Crusades. Uh, and one guy was a Muslim and he was a Christian crusader. And they'd kind of like got this thing of, um, you know, they were going to do each other in. And, uh, and they both went out of body as they both stabbed each other in the battlefield. And then they were laughing because they'd been doing this over and over again, lifetime after lifetime. And they could see the joke of it when they flipped out of body. So a lot of these things I think are, are karmic contracts. You know, it's like, okay, I did you in last lifetime, and now we're both going to get born into the same lifetime, and you're going to take that role, I'm going to take this role. And, uh, you, I mean, I'm sure that's not always the case, as there's a past life connection. But uh, I, don't th I don't believe in accidents. And even if uh, some, yeah, it's not a past life thing, the only things that can show up in my life um, are, are things I have a dualistic... Um, I have a dualistic relationship with, i.e. the attractions and the versions. Like, I could be, uh, attra I'm attracted to donuts, but I'm averse to losing money. I don't like losing money, but I'm attracted to donuts. But then what happens is I can get lessons in this lifetime for transcending donuts. And I can, so I get lessons to transcend my attraction to donuts, but I can also get lessons to transcend my aversion to losing money. Because those are, the, those are the only things so, that I'm attracted to or I'm averse to. And I think, um, like, why are other people attracted to me and why am I attracted to people? Well, you'd have to, you know, in my ego is my karmic makeup of attractions and aversions or limiting beliefs. Like, I can have a belief, I like donuts, I don't like losing money. So, so and, and the life and the events of life are just correlating to, for my transcendence and the other person's transcendence. So in each encounter, I think some people might call them holy assignments or, or whatever you want to call them. It's like, you know, there's an opportunity for me to learn something and there's an opportunity for the other to learn something, to transcend. And sometimes we take in different lifetimes opposite roles. I might be the goody in this lifetime and they're the baddie or I might be the baddie and they're the goody. Um, and there's an opportunity for transcendence and growth. Um, when, uh, if, if, you know, the attraction, if you, if you use the Course in Miracles and make it meaningless or go into position of neutrality around it, um, you can't have an, it can't be a thing that can affect you. Because even if it happened, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother you, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Or if you're in neutrality or it happens, if you're in a position of neutrality around donuts, you, it's no longer an issue. Or if you're in a position of neutrality or observing around loss of money, it's not really an event that you'd notice. You, okay, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got like uh, my Bitcoin portfolio is now 50 grand and then the next day it's 40 grand. So you've just lost 10 grand, but it's not really a big deal, you see, because it's, you don't notice it unless it is something. But in terms of, so I don't see anything is by... If there, if there is an attraction or aversion to the type of individual, then for me it's about transcending that and making it meaningless. Um, I like the thing of um, Dr. Dr. Hugh Len, you know, and, I, and he, I think he, I'm not an expert, so people might, he will be much more expert, but I like what, I think he calls it tran uh, clearing the data. Uh, clearing the data. I, I, if, that, if that's what he uses, I really like it. So there is like, you know, I have my personal data, my, collective, my personal beliefs, and there's collective belief systems. And there are things that show up as events from my personal stuff and others. Like, oh, this person likes me because I'm giving out free donuts. This person doesn't like me because I'm bold, whatever it is. So those are things, then those are data, which I can then, uh, I can then clear. And if I clear it in myself, I, on some level I'm clearing it from the collective. But I think the saints are really... Um, trying to clear, the, you know, they've done a lot of their personal stuff and now they're clearing stuff, the collective data. Which is what I believe uh, Hugh Len did with that prism of uh, 
vial of inmates, you know, now I've cleared all my own stuff, I can spend the rest of my life clearing other people's stuff, isn't that fun? Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm not even sure if I've answered the question.